Hey Internet's RJ, welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today's episode, we are going to sit down, play around with some credit cards to try to build out the best cashback setup that I can think of that I'm going to try to do myself in the coming months, you know, over here to, you know, basically max out, get the maximum amount I can from this game. So of course, if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button and let's get to work. Now, you know, I've talked about it before and I'll link the video down below, but why I'm more team cashback these days than anything else, right? And so really, you know, just to summarize that, if you haven't seen it, you know, I have a whole another channel dedicated to bank account bonuses where my goal is to take $10,000 from banks like every year. But of course, to make, you could do that and you could say you could count credit cards, bank accounts, promos, referrals, all that in the mix as well. But for me, I was like, let's make it hard. Let's try to do 10 grand from bonuses. Then since I do a lot of referral videos, I'm like, hey, let's try to do 10 grand in referrals maybe starting next year when the channel's been up for a year. So why not do like 5,000 in credit card points which may or may not seem like a lot. Um, truthfully, I, it might be doable. I don't know, I really haven't tracked it that much, but again, I'm just one person, so my spend isn't that high, honestly. And then the other two, you know, so it was like 25 grand in, you know, from banks a year would be a significant amount of money. And the other side of that is that, you know, for me personally right now where I'm at in my life, I just prefer cash back. It's a lot more useful to me than the travel component of it. But to get to that number, you're going to have to really optimize your cashback strategy and really focus in on 4 and 5% back cards. Of course, you may have guessed leaning heavily on the category card. So, you know, I think it's going to be easier. I've set up almost a mini game board where we have the little card icons and we can just drag them around and talk about the cards and why. Because as you're going to see, there's a lot of different optionality you have. There's regional cards, you know, things like that that, you know, may be different from where you're at than where I'm at. Of course, we can layer in categories kind of see how the strategy could change quarter to quarter. So let's jump over to the computer, let's walk through it and some, have some fun playing with credit cards and we'll come back here for some final thoughts at the end. Okay guys, this is gonna serve as the board that we're gonna play for the rest of the show on. So of course down below you have just a bunch of cards I pulled over that I think will be helpful. You do have some annual fee cards. I'm probably going to stay away from those because I, I don't really want a ton of annual fee cards in my cash back setup, but I do want to talk about them as options. Top, you have the categories. Again, you could split this out any different way you want it, but groceries, phone, internet, food, gas, utilities, gym and fitness, catch-all, shopping, gift cards, uh, travel, rent, and entertainment. So we're going to go through, we're going to plug in a card for each one of these, and then we're going to do like the second pass that will be like, hey, the category cards, right, to kind of show how, how you get some optionality here. So if you start, you know, technically we are going to start with the category card for groceries um, because I'm going to use the Huntington Business Voice. I have this card. Now, Huntington is a regional bank, so it is region locked, and you do have to apply in branch, but... It does get, let you pick one category a quarter, and you get $7,000 in spend at 4% back in that category. Groceries is one of them, so I use that. If you couldn't get that card, or you don't mind an annual fee, you could go for the, uh, the, um, the Amex BCP card here. That is an option you could use. Again, you will make your money back on this card. I tend to stay away because it's got annual fees, but we can play around with that. But for me, that's what I'm going with. Now, phone and internet, again, you have some optionality. Uh, Cash Plus would not be a bad option, but I want to use that later. So really, I want to go to the Ink Cash card from Chase, another card I actually have, and then 5% back on phone, internet, and cable. Easy enough. Now, food, again, food, you could go with the MX Gold card. 4x MR points back, but again, annual fee. So for me, I think the winner here is going to be the Altitude Go card. Again, it's basically the same thing, 4% back on restaurants is just uh, no annual fee. I don't have this card, but I do want it. Gas gets a little interesting. Now for me personally, right now, I do use the custom cash, but since I'm doing a first pass of just you know, core cards, I would say the PNC Cash Rewards card's pretty good. Um, I don't have this card, and I don't know if it's region locked. PNC is bigger. Um, you might be able to get this other places. I know we've talked about it on the show, but anyways, you know, this is 4% back on gas. There's some other categories in there, but it's basically 4% on gas up to, I think, $8,000 a year in spend, which for our purposes, again, pretty good. Now we have utilities and gym and fitness. Now is the time for the cash plus. I'm sure many of you saw this coming, but here we go. Now the only problem with this, well, you know, you can pick your categories again, similar to the Huntington card, but you get two categories per quarter, 5% back and up to $2,000 in spend per quarter. 
So the only problem with this is like, I have this card and this is how I use it. I'm re you're just really not maximizing the $2,000, right? For me, my gym is $30 a month. I mean, if you're going to Equinox or something, maybe, but I'm, you know, $30 a month for me at the powerhouse down the street. Utilities, I don't remember they are off the top of my head, but again, it's far from $2,000. But I think it's still fine because again, it, you know, if we're trying to maximize everything and this allows me to do it. Now, of course, you could go out. They have a lot of clone versions of these. It's small banks and credit unions run by like whoever hey, with their credit card program through a lawn credit. Um, so you could find more of these. I think they're called like max cash rewards cards. Um, you could do that. I don't think we're going to need to, but that is also a strategy you could employ. Now, catch all again, catch all. You could go any direction you want. Technically, the Allo Optimum card is the best no annual fee catch all card we've talked about on the show. 2.5% uh, back on all purchases. It is invite only. I did receive an invite at one point. I did not sign up. Allies actually in the process of buying these guys at the time of taping, but I wanted to put it on there. Um, since I wouldn't really sign up for this, I'm going to go double cash. You could go active cash. I have the double cash. That's why I'm sliding it in there. Again, if you were banking for America Platinum Honors, um, this card here would be 2.62% back. Your unlimited cash card, that could be an option. I'm probably not going to move that much money to Bank of America or Merrill Lynch just for two cards, but, you know, you could do it. Now, shopping. Shopping is going to be the biggest up for interpretation. So for me, shopping kind of means online shopping, right? And so for that, it would be two cards. Amazon, and quite frankly, Amazon covers most of it for me because any other shop, even as a department store, I'm usually getting gift cards. So, you know, I would also add in the PayPal card in there as well. Between two, these two, if you're going to be covering a most online shopping, because this is 3% back through PayPal, 5% back at Amazon. So again, but this is more department store for you. I do believe Cash Plus has a department store option. I might have to double check that. But for shopping, especially online shopping, I think this is good, especially when you um, slot it in with gift cards. Now, gift cards... Again, for gift cards, I mean, number one, we can go back to the cash uh, business cash card because you can still get 5% back at office supply stores as well. So that's going to give you enough options to buy all your Amazon cards. They don't have the widest range of uh, gift cards, you know, at the, uh, at the office supply store. But again, I think it is safe to slot in one of the category cards here. I know we said we're going to save them for later, but I think we get the point. Because whatever their category is, you can usually get gift cards which again is going to go back and cover a lot of this shopping, um, you know, shopping deal, right? So I think that works for now. Um, travel, again, remember this is a cash back setup. So I didn't include like anything like a Venture X or a Platinum card because this is kind of like your, I just want some points when I'm traveling, but I'm not going all out. And so again, you could drop down to here. You could use the green card. The green card would actually be a good option if you're like, uh, you know, maybe Chicago, New York City, you're taking the subway, you're taking Ubers, ride shares, transit, that whole thing would be a good option. It's not for me because it's not where I live. Um, I was, yeah, between these two, between Sapphire Preferred and the Premier, you could do one of those as well. But honestly, I think the answer might be the autograph card. There's enough points in there, 3X back for transit and some travel stuff. I think that covers us right there rent i did put rent in here i don't necessarily pay rent myself but uh, because we know it exists there is the built rewards cards so you might as well maximize that and then entertainment again you know entertainment you could probably get away with some gift cards and things like that but maybe even paypal honestly but the saver card is going to get you three percent back there is the annual fee version of the saver card that you could do um, but I, I don't really think one more percent is worth the 95 dollars personally so if we take a look at that that's our first pass at cards so if you think i've missed some cards uh, feel free to drop them down below i did at least try to talk through some scenarios if you don't agree with my scenarios by all means you can let me know down below as well so the first pass I mean, we have a lot of four percent well some five percent you know three percent down here but overall not too bad so you know, now you really have to start incorporating your category card. And so for me personally, right, I have three freedom cards. You can have the Discovery Cash card. We didn't even use the City Custom Cash card yet. This is where it kind of gets fun, right? Because now, realistically, we could say, um, you know, what if we said, hey, that, you know, the, um, we could say, hey, if the category was gas stations, right, then, you know, you would simply swap in. I don't want to move this. I just want to copy it. You know, you would plug that in, and now you're getting, you know, 5% back on 
on gas stations, right, with the Freedom. But then you could have the Discover card, obviously, and maybe the Discover was groceries, right? So you could put that in there. And then, you know, that still leaves the city custom cash. I do have this card, so maybe you could say, well, a custom cash, I actually want to move in for dining instead. Now I've got some more 5%. You could do, that means you could free up the Huntington card technically and swap it out to, you know, another category if you wanted to. I mean, it's got some things like automotive in there as well. You could help, but it gives you options, right? And again, because I have multiple of these freedom cards, you know, that works pretty well. Now, you know, you could also mess around with this some more. We clear off that for a minute. Say, hey, now well, let's say the category again. If we're to groceries, now, you know, we can just move a, uh, I want to leave these here. We will move a freedom card there. And that's going to free up this card. But then if Discover this time around was actually, you know, um, I think in the past it has been, um, you know, it has been uh, food before. They've done that. You could have that there. Moves the altitude go. But now, again, you have the custom cash. So you could say, oh, well, I'll put the custom cash with gas this time. I don't necessarily need, you know, the, uh, the gas card here. You know, if, again, I don't think we've ever seen category cards cover utilities. But you could. You have optionality here as well. And, again, I, you can have multiple freedom cards. I've got three. You can have two Discovery cards, I think, between the regular and, like, the NHL one. And then, of course, there are ways to get other custom cash cards here, right? So the kind of overall point here is that really you lay down your base and then you go in in like probably once a quarter when the What's in Your Wallet videos come out, you start plugging in the category cards where needed and that's kind of really what takes you up to 5%, right? This jumps up to from 4 to 5, this jumps up, you know, from 4 to 5, this jumps up from 4 to 5. And again, you know, the categories vary, right? There's also the strategy of simply pre-buying stuff because I have three Freedom cards. It's actually entirely possible that if you're comfortable with it, you know you're going to spend you could just you know pre-buy grocery gift cards here right because you know realistically you're probably going to have six months of groceries between freedom and discover same with gas you're probably gonna have six months of gas we usually see it once in chase and once in discover meaning your custom cash again plays a vital part rotating through these where you don't have five percent back and then of course your catch-all lastly you know really you swap this in if you're going after sign up bonuses and things like that and you know some of these i think end up staying the same down here but again gift cards for me is a very powerful option as well so again, I think the point is that, you know, you have a bunch of options. So we're going to, um, I think that's enough examples here. So we're going to go ahead and flip back to the, lane, the main view for some final thoughts here and to close this one up. And so there we have it, guys. That was, you know, again, the overall game board, if you will. I, overall, I think it was easier to illustrate that point, just drag and dropping. So, yeah, obviously, I still have some work to do as far as collecting these cards, getting them into the rotation, and you do need to be smart and roadmap this out, right? Because, again, we know if you want a U.S. bank altitude go, well, sometimes they're inquiry sensitive, so you may want to hold and wait, you know, on a few cards before you get into that one. Of course, they're still chased 524. We don't want to forget business cards and bonus hunting as well. You just want to max it out before you're done with chase. But overall, I think the thing that stands out to me is most is the optionality and where you can plug in other cards at depending on where your spend is the highest. Dining for me is weak right now, as we said, but I don't spend a ton of money on food out really. So for you know right now, the 3X on a Freedom Flex can carry me until I can get something like an Altitude Go or even another custom cash to support the dining thing, right? And then the last thing is just like flexibility, you know. There are a lot of card options, but I really prefer the ones that allow you to redeem in any amount of cash back um, and not have to do in 25 increments or minimums of 25. So those are things I'll also try to kind of optimize and perfect as we go because, again, your setup should be seamless and to the point, not cause you any hassle. That's kind of what I'm going for. So anyways, that's kind of what I got. Again, it's a lot of optionality. So if you were playing along at home, let me know down below uh, what you think or what cards you would include in there and what you know your maximum cashback set it would be. Or even if you play travel, the game works both ways. Either way, love to hear your thoughts on that. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching. Drop me a thumbs up down below. If you find it interesting, you can also consider subscribing to the channel because we are posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was incredible and finance of course we'll do updates you know in the what's in your wallet videos of how the cash back is going so if you want to follow along for that as well and see how my goal progresses that's always there as well anyways guys thank you so much for watching i'll talk to you very soon in the next one